the Run from Isafel by M. R. Anglin. First published in the anthology Gauze with Fur, edited by Fred Patton, copyright 2016. Part 1. The jostling of the pickup, bumping over rocks and dirt, was so relaxing that Skidder almost didn't hear the whisper telling him it was time to disembark the truck bed he had been hitching a ride on. He rubbed his eyes and yawned. The sun beat down on his round, fur-covered ears and made the skin under his brown fur itch. An endless sand sea stretched out over the landscape until it met the sky at the horizon, a sky so blue it dazzled Skidder's eyes. Wind blew through his furring clothes and whistled through the sand. Ash-gray trees and cacti poked up through the barren landscape. It was so mind-blowingly beautiful that Skidder nearly fell into a trance watching it. He shook his head and stretched, his arm flaps almost catching the wind and launching him into the air. As a flying squirrel, one wrong gesture on a windy day, or in a fast-moving truck, could mean takeoff. so he kept his arms close to his body as he knocked on the window to the cab. "'Excuse me!' Skidder shouted at the driver, an otter named Darren who had agreed to give him a ride. "'I have to get off here!' "'Here?' The otter's voice was muffled. He opened the window and blinked into the wind. "'But there's nothing around!' He tried to glance at Skidder while keeping his eyes on the road. "'We'll be in town soon, so hang tight!' Skidder sat back on his tail and then shifted position so he could move it out of the way. Dan was right. There was nothing out here. But he was sure that he had heard Cadiel tell him it was time to get off, and he knew better than to second-guess Cadiel. If Cadiel wanted Skidder to get off here, here's where Skidder was going to get off. He got to his feet. The special toga he wore fluttered in the wind. It had openings on the sides to allow his arm flax to catch the air currents. He stepped to the edge of the bed, stretched his arms to the side, and jumped. Hey! Dan slammed on his brakes. The truck squealed to a halt. Skidder had heard that some of the people on the mainland drove hover cars, but Darren's car had wheels. He said it made it easier to traverse the desert. Skidder's flaps caught the air and lifted him up, but the wind he had felt earlier had died down, so Skidder parachuted to the ground and landed on packed dirt. Are you crazy? Darren slammed his door before marching over to Skidder. You could have gotten yourself killed. It's okay, Darren, though. Back on the island of Cassate, where Skidder was from, the suffix lo, flee for females, was a term of respect. You didn't have to stop for me. I... Oh, Skidder stiffened. Wait, I'm sorry. I didn't even realize. He pulled money out of his pocket. Here's some gas money. Thank you for the ride. Darren stared at the money. I don't want that. But you brought me all this way. Forget it. Darren beckoned to Skidder. Back on the truck. We've got a few more miles to go until town. But this is where I'm going. Skidder pointed down the dark pat road he had landed on. It snaked its way through the desert. I'm supposed to follow this road all the way down. This one? Darren pointed at the road, but there's nothing down there. It's just desert. Sure looks like it, doesn't it? Skidder put his hand on his hips as he studied the path. Guess I better get moving. Stop! Darren jerked Skidder to a halt. Don't you know what's down there? Skidder paused a moment, his eyebrows arching up. Maybe Darren was a little slow. You just told me it was desert. That's the road to Expermia. You know, the land foreigners never return from. At least, not alive. Darren waved his fingers in a spooky kind of way. Skidder stifled a sigh. It was official. Dan was a bit slow. I'm sure that's not the case. He brushed Darren's hands off his shoulders. You don't scare easy, do you? Dan rubbed his hands over his head. Okay, okay. I was exaggerating. But experiments are not friendly to foreigners, what they call outsiders. And that's only if you make it there. That desert walk is a killer, and I'm not joking about that. You could die out there. Really? Skidder's eyes grew wide as he looked down the road. Imagine a path so treacherous it could kill someone by walking it. It must be the heat and the sun. It was pretty hot out here. A smile came to Skidder's lips. Maybe, just maybe, this was his time to take the final journey to Cadiel's side and... No, no, Skidder, not yet, came the whisper, and Skidder was certain it was chuckling. Skidder sighed. Too bad. It's okay, Darren Low, he turned to Darren. I won't die here. Cadiel says it's not my time yet, but there's something he wants me to do down there. And why do you look so disappointed about not dying? Darren gave a grunt. I should have known this was going to be a strange day when Dabby asked me to give you a ride. Leave it to his dinner to be as weird as he is. Wait there a moment. He made his way back to his truck. I can't believe this kid's only thirteen. He's caused me so much trouble. Skidder glanced down the path as Darren's muttering fell away. He wanted to get going, but Cadiel didn't seem to mind the delay. He took a deep breath and waited. Here we go. Darren returned, holding a container with a strap on it. Dabby told me you might pull something like this. He said if you were insistent, I'm supposed to let you go. He also said you don't think these things through. Skidder cocked his head, his ear twitching a bit. What do you mean? Water. Darren handed him the container. Oh, 
thank you. Skitter slung it over his shoulder. Now listen. Darren knelt so that his face was level with Skitter's. His eyes were hard and serious, commanding Skitter's attention. Like I said before, this road leads to Expermia, but it doesn't lead to a formal border. A border is not necessary. Most people die of heat and thirst before they get anywhere significant. But there's a little shop on the side of the road that marks the edge of Expermia. If you can get supplies there, you might make it to where you're going. If not, your best plan is to turn your tail around and head southeast towards the town I was telling you about. It's small, but the area around is flat, so you should see it if you're within a few miles of it. Thank you, Darren Lowe. Skidden turned to face the road. It was nice that Darren worried about him so, but there was nothing to worry about. If Cadiel called him to do something, how bad could it be? Skidders were prickled with excitement as he started down the road. This was it. He was on his first mission from Cadiel, without Dabby to guide him. Be careful out there, Skidder, Darren called as Skidder walked. I don't want Dabby to have to bear one of his acolytes. I'll be okay, Skidder waved at him over his shoulder. I told you, Cadiel says it's not my time yet. Darren shook his head. He returned to his truck and took off. Skidder turned his attention back to the road. You know something, Cadiel? Some people say I'm flighty, but a lot of times they don't listen. I'm sure I told him what you said about it not being my time once before. And though Skidder didn't see anybody, he was sure he had heard Cadiel laugh. End of part one. On the Run from Isabel by M. R. Anglin, part two. Skidder had never been afraid of dying. Rather, in a way, he was looking forward to it. Dying meant he was on his way to see Cadiel and live with him forever. But just because he wasn't afraid of dying, that didn't mean he wanted to die. For all his life, he had thought that if he were given the option to choose his death, drowning would be on the bottom of his list. But now another option was added to his list of undesirable death, dehydration. But worse than dying of dehydration was living through it. He smacked his lips as his tongue stuck to the roof of his mouth. His tongue felt like the sand on the ground and his saliva was thick and sticky. It had only been a few hours since he left Darren, but the sun beat relentlessly on his fur. Heat from the surrounding air smothered him and drifted up from the sand, burning his sandaled feet. His toga would have been soaked with sweat if the dry air hadn't sucked it up as soon as it came out of his pores. There was no escape from the desert's torment. Skidder plodded down the road, longing for the water he had long since finished. It was only through Cadiel's whispered directions that he hadn't lost the road. The heat was making him drowsy and loopy all at once, and he was hallucinating. Often he'd see images of water shimmering in the distance, but every time he rushed towards it, there would be nothing but sand, even knowing he saw a shimmer with what looked like mountains in the distance. Skidder was beginning to hate those water illusions. A dark mass appeared on the edge of the road. As Skidder plodded closer, it took on the form of a small wooden building that was bleached gray from the sun. The wood siding was cracked and split, but it held up a tin roof that sparkled in the sun. Probably another fake vision, Skidder glared at it as he approached. It will disappear soon, but it didn't go anywhere. Skidder came to a halt next to it. Outside was a cart full of peach-colored fruit with red splotches on it. Inside was packed with groceries, food, and drinks. I made it, Skidder tore towards it. This is the place Darren Lowe was talking about. He burst in, darted straight for the refrigerators, and grabbed an ice-cold bottle of water. Condensation dripped from it as soon as he took it out of the case. He downed the whole thing so fast, he got an ice cream headache. It's totally worth it! Skidder clenched his teeth as the headache faded. Then he flung open the door to the refrigerator and allowed the cold air to waft over his hot fur. Hey, you, outsider! Now let's see. Skidder heard someone calling, but he didn't know anyone out here who'd call to him. I'm going to need much more water to keep going. He scooped up as many bottles as he could carry. Yo, outsider! Skidder's stomach rumbled. I'm going to need food, too. He surveyed the shelves of food and caught sight of a selection of nuts on display. Ooh, hazelnuts and almonds, my favorites. He glanced at his full hands and then at the nut display. I gotta put this down. He ambled to the checkout counter. The fox behind the counter stiffened his whiskers as Skidder unloaded his hands. Now Skidder knew better than to stare at someone different from him, but this brown fox had ears so enormous Skidder couldn't help it. They must have been the size of Skidder's head. Plus his brown hair had turned a shade of red at the ends, red as autumn leaves. His name tag read Fane. Listen you, outsider. Fane's angry tone snapped Skidder out of it. Sorry, I didn't mean to stare. Is it alright if I leave these here a second? I'm going to get more stuff and come back to pay for it all. Skidder swung around to the nut display. 
Wait a second. Vane caught Skitter by the shoulder. You can't do that. Oh, Skitter paused a moment. Is there a basket I can use then? I mean that. Vane shook the empty water bottle Skitter had drunk. This is unacceptable. Skitter scratched the back of his head. I was so thirsty, but I'll pay for it with the rest of my stuff. We don't serve outsiders here. But I have money. Skitter reached into his pocket. What currency do you use? Vane thrust his chin into the air. We don't sell things to outsiders, and we don't take their money. Skitter raised an eyebrow. So you're mad that I drank the water, but you won't let me pay for it? That doesn't make any sense. It's my establishment, so it's my rules. Fane bared his teeth. Now, you stole from me. What are we going to do about that? I'm trying to... Skitter's ear twitched. A shadow fell over him. He turned to see two foxes with large ears and bicolored hair had approached him from behind. They cracked their knuckles. Skitter blinked at them. They towered over him, their ears pinned back. They wore tunics with two splits on both sides and baggy pants underneath. Long pieces of cloth held in place by silver pins dangled from around their shoulders and waists. Skitter gazed at them and their clenching fists. Uh, are you going to beat me up? We don't take kindly to outsider thieves around here, Fane grinned. Skitter's ears fell. His tail flopped on the ground. He had never been in a situation like this before. What was one to do at this point? A bright light dazzled his eyes. He tilted his head to see behind the two thugs and spied a creature, the species of which he could not determine, standing behind them. It had a fiery sword in its folded hands, and its golden eyes were narrowed. Skitter hissed in a breath through his teeth. Beating me up is not a good idea. I don't think Cadiel wants you to do that. We don't care what Cadiel thinks, said one of the thugs. Yeah, the other snickered. Bring your Cadiel around here. We'll beat him up, too. Skitter stiffened. Could it be that these people had no idea who Cadiel was and how dangerous it was to badmouth him? Sure enough, the creature behind them, some sort of cat, a white leopard maybe, growled. He raised his sword to strike. Wait, wait, wait! Skitter raised his hands. Don't, please, I'll leave. You don't have to hurt anybody. It's too late for that, the first thug said, and the other laughed in agreement. Skitter turned his eyes to them. I wasn't talking to you. The two thugs forward their brows. That's it, Fane rumbled deep in his throat. I don't know what game you're playing, outsider, but it's over now. Get rid of him, boys. Excuse me. Another fox, this one Skitter's age, shoved his way between the two big foxes. He was brown and had the largest air Skitter had ever seen, even larger than Fane's. Seriously, they must have been twice the size of Skitter's head. And his glasses were two large brown circles set on his snout. His two front teeth peeked out from under his closed mouth. He wore the same type of clothes as Fane and his companions, but unlike Fane, his hair wasn't two colors. He had a bag full of food and drinks in his hand. He shot a glare at each of the foxes and slammed down a bill. I'll take three waters. He slid Skitter's empty bottle and two unopened ones in front of Fane. Fane snorted. That one's open. I can see that. The fox adjusted his glasses. These make sure of it. If you can't take my money, I am an experienced citizen. You're a feisty one, aren't you? Fane jerked his head. The two brutes moved aside. Once they did, Skitter glanced behind them. The creature snorted through his nose and disappeared. Skitter sighed from relief. Everyone was safe. Here, the big-eared fox tossed Skitter one of the unopened bottles. Use that to get out of Expermia. Outsiders don't belong here. He turned on his heel and walked out the door. Wait! Skitter scrambled after him. As he darted out of the door, he nearly crashed into a vixen his age. She had brown hair and fur, freckles on her snout, and olive green eyes. Her tan dress reached down to her shins and had a slit on either side that went up to her waist. Underneath the dress, she wore a pair of brown pants. Like the other experiments Skitter had seen thus far, she also had the same cloth hanging from her waist. They were held in place by silver pins with an engraved design on it. She gazed at Skitter with large eyes. Let's go, Shireen. The fox handed her an extra bottle of water before marching toward her sandbike. It was a typical bike, but like Darren's truck, it too used wheels instead of hover jets. The vixen took one last look at Skitter before she trotted after the fox. Wait a second, Skitter followed them. What do you want now, outsider? The fox unloaded his supplies into the sidecar. You saved those two big guys when you intervened. Skitter took his hands. Thank you so much. He pumped them up and down. Save them? The fox pulled his hands out of Skitter's grasp. I think I saved you. 
The vixen, whose name seemed to be Shireen, grabbed the fox's hands. She shook her head, pointed at Skitter, and then at her eyes. She gestured and her mouth worked, but no sounds came out. What? The fox exhaled through his nose. Shireen, I don't understand you. Doesn't she talk? Skitter studied her. Shireen stiffened. She released the fox's hands, dropped her eyes, and shook her head. I'm sorry, Skitter lowered his head. We have to go. The fox stuffed the rest of its things into the sidecar. Shireen! Shireen glanced at Skitter, then tapped the fox on the shoulder. She pointed at Skitter and then at the sidecar. No, no, no! The fox thumped his foot. We are not taking him with us. Shireen made a gesture as if to ask why. Because he's an outsider. I have already stuck my neck out for him once because you insisted. Why are you so keen on him anyway? Shireen clasped her hands and pleaded with her eyes. It's okay, Shireen, Skitter smiled at her. I don't think I can come with you anyway. I have a job to do. Oh, yeah? The fox leaned on his bike. What job? Skitter shrugged. I don't know yet. The fox clicked his tongue. Outsiders. He sat on his bike. Let's go, Shireen. Hey, what's your name? Skitter said as the fox put his bike in gear. Why do you need to know? Skitter shrugged. Shireen elbowed the fox before climbing up on the bike behind him. Name's Tuval, said the fox. Tuval! Skitter smiled at him, revealing its own large front teeth. I'm Skitter. I'm sure we'll see each other again. Skitter? Tuval stifled a snicker. Really? Skitter nodded. It took a moment for Tuval to wipe the smile off his face. Well, Skitter, I doubt we'll ever see each other again. He sped off. I like him. Skitter watched him go. So, Cadiel, what do I do now? A faint whisper came to him. Start walking. Skitter groaned. I don't want to be thirsty again. Cadiel said nothing. Okay, Skitter took a deep breath. He got back on the road and headed down it. It might be difficult and even painful, but there is nowhere in the world Skitter would rather be than where Cadiel wanted him to be, even if it was panting with thirst in the middle of the desert. Thank you for listening to part two. Stay tuned for part three. On the Run from Isabel by M. R. Anglin, part three. Skitter shot up to a sitting position. The moon and stars shone down on him. He had collapsed on the sand somewhere around sunset and had fallen fast asleep, but a noise had woken him in the middle of the night. A howl tore through the still night. It was the same noise that had woken him up, but this one was much closer. A snarl rolled through the air. Skitter swung around. A brown animal that went on all fours crept closer to him. Its teeth were bared and glistened with saliva. Its fur was an edge. Wow! Skitter got to his feet. I have never seen anything like you before. You are a beautiful creature. It snarled and leapt. Back! Back! A figure jumped between Skitter and the animal. He had a lit torch in one of his hands. Duval? Skitter blinked at him. Get out of here! None took all his traveling backs! Duval waved the torch at the creature. Go to my bike, now! Skitter glanced over his shoulder. Shireen sat on the sand bike a short distance away. She beckoned to him furiously. Skitter darted to it. Shireen motioned to the sidecar, so Skitter jumped in, squashing some of their supplies in the process. Tuval threw the torch at the creature, darted to the bike, hopped on in front of Shireen, and took off. The creature galloped after them, but it soon fell behind. What did I tell you? Tuval shouted at Shireen as he drove. I told you he was nothing but trouble. Why did you insist on following him? We've lost half a day of traveling because he walked so slow. Shireen ducked her head, but held on tight to Tuval. Shireen, Tuval sighed. And you, he shot a glare at Skitter. You are so danger-prone, outsider. I would have been fine, Skitter tapped his knees. Cadiel said this wasn't my time to go yet, though being attacked by that thing would have hurt a lot, so thanks. Tuval took a moment to stare at Skitter. Whatever, he shook his head. Weirdo. Skitter let a snicker escape him. That wasn't the worst thing he had been called in his life, and Tuval probably wouldn't be the last to say that about him. It was surprisingly cold in the desert at night. Goosebumps rose in raves on Skitter's skin as wind from the bike's motion washed over him. He had bundled himself in his tail and had started to feel cozy when Tuval pulled a sand bike to a stop. We'll camp around here tonight, Tuval surveyed the area, but we need a place far enough from the road that we don't get seen. Why don't you want anyone to find you? Skitter buried his nose in his tail. I, um, it's... Tuval turned away, scratching his cheek. It's none of your business, that's what. Skitter cocked his head. This whole situation was getting more and more interesting as time went on. Shireen gasped. 
She tugged at Tuval's clothes and pointed to the distance. When Skidder looked, he saw an orange flickering glow on the sand. A whisper beckoned him to the light. Firelight! Tuval tapped the seat of his bike. We should head off and travel a bit more. We don't want to— Hey, Shireen! Shireen had hopped off the bike and darted toward the fire. She's got the right idea. Skidder jumped out of the sidecar and trotted after her. I'm surrounded by crazies. Get back here, you two. Tuval darted after them. When Skidder caught up to Shireen, she was standing before the fire, staring at a figure sitting next to it. It was a white Alsatian, what well, some people call a German Shepherd. He wore the same kind of clothes as both Tuval and Shireen, actually the same kind of clothes as all the experiments Skidder had met thus far had worn. Hello. The Alsatian smiled at them. Come by the fire and get warm. There was something about that voice that made Skidder's heart jump. He dashed to the Alsatian's side before he realized he was snuggling next to a stranger. But the Alsatian didn't mind. My name is Joseph, he said. To fall, Shireen, thank you for defending Skidder those two times. It allowed me to set all this up for you before you got here. You know this kid? Tuval pointed at Skidder. I've been traveling with him for a while now, Joseph said. Isn't that right, Skidder? That's right! It wasn't until the words left Skidder's mouth that he realized he had been traveling alone all this time. Well, alone except for Katayel. But somehow he didn't feel as if he had told a lie, either. He turned to the stranger. Joseph looked at him with laughing eyes. It made Skidder want to jump and shout for joy. Who was this guy? If you had waited a few moments once he had chased and then took away from Skidder, you would have seen me, Joseph stoked the fire. I was shooing off the rest of his pack. You were? Skidder's eyes widened. I was, Joseph nodded. Then you must be a fast traveler, Tuval said. I am, Joseph said, and offered no more word of explanation. Skidder studied the stranger. If he concentrated, he could almost recognize him, but the truth seemed to be hidden. Joseph chuckled to himself. Skidder, are you thirsty? If you are, you should drink. All I have left is the rest of my water bottle. Skidder pulled out his bottle. There is only a fourth left. Drink, Joseph said. Skidder shrugged. He was thirsty, and looking at his water was making his tongue stick to the top of his mouth. He downed the contents. At least he would have. But the little bit of water he had didn't seem to end. There must have been more water in here than he had thought. He drank until his thirst had disappeared. When he looked at his water bottle again, the water level had not dropped. Skidder's eyes bugged out of his head. What the? He turned to Joseph. You, you, can I help? Shh. Joseph put a finger on smiling lips and winked at him. Now please sit. I give you my word that you are safe. He looked into Shireen's eyes, and I'm sure you'll find the solution to your particular problem soon. Shireen's eyes widened. She plopped onto the ground. We don't need your help, thanks. Tuval caught Shireen's hand. Let's go. Sit down, Tuval. Joseph motioned to the ground. If you go further, you'll find yourself in trouble. Tuval crossed his arms. Why should I believe you? You don't have to. Joseph smirked at him, but in a good-natured way. But you should. Tuval snorted. He sank to the ground. All these stupid outsiders, he muttered. I'm only staying because it's too dark and dangerous to go any further. You are wiser than you think you are. Joseph leaned forward to look him in the eye. Both you and Shireen are welcome to me. Tuval's fur stood straight on end. His face flushed and he looked away. Joseph leaned back on his hands. Why don't you go to sleep? Skidder and I will keep watch. You're right. Tuval crossed his arms, as if I would sleep with outsiders watching over me. He glared at Joseph through narrowed eyes. It didn't take him long to fall asleep. Skidder let his eyes wander over to Val's still form. He has been awake longer than he should have been. Joseph laid his hands on his knees. The poor thing has taken on too much for one his age. Is it my business? Skidder looked up at Joseph. Can I ask what he's been through? You'll find out soon enough. Skidder drew up his knees to his chest. So how come you came? I mean, how come you're visible to me? You're not usually. And how come you didn't let me know who you were at the beginning? Because sometimes I like to surprise you. You make the most delightful face when you're surprised. Skidder couldn't help but smile. So, Shireen, my dear, Josiah's voice rose. Would you like to tell me why you've been calling out to me all this time? Skidder turned to the place where she had been sleeping. Shireen pulled herself onto her hands. And by the way she blushed, it was obvious that she had been eavesdropping. She looked Joseph right in the eye, shrugged, and shook her head. Of course you've been calling to me. You've been calling to me ever since this terrible plight has befallen you. Joseph gave a grin. You just didn't realize it was me you were calling. Shireen's eyes widened. 
Now come, Shireen. Josiah patted the ground in front of him. Won't you sit and tell us what has happened? Shireen got up from her place and sat where Josiah had indicated. She glanced at Tuval and bit her lips together. Her eyes darted around the camp for a moment before she nodded to herself. Then she looked into Josiah's face and gestured with her hands. No, no, dear. Josiah held up his hands. Use your words. Shireen blinked at him. Um, sir? Skitter played with his tail. She can't talk. Of course she can talk. Josiah's ears turned forward. She's just unable to at the moment. Her voice was stolen from her. Shireen's mouth dropped open. Skitter let his whiskers twitch. I don't understand. Shireen, would you be so kind to allow me to look inside your mouth? Josiah said. Shireen started, her ears shooting straight up. I'm sure he'll be able to help you, Shireen. Skitter held the tips of his toes. Shireen clamped her mouth shut. She shook her head so hard her hair slapped her cheeks. But why not, Shireen? Skitter got to his knees. Shireen shook her head even harder. She scrambled to her feet and darted to the sleeping bag. She climbed in and pulled it over her head. Shireen! Skitter got to his feet to chase after her. Let it go, Skitter. Josiah put his hand on Skitter's shoulder. I knew she wouldn't trust me all at once. She feels there's more to me than she can see, and it scares her. But why? You'll find that out soon enough. Josiah leaned back. Go to sleep. I'll watch over you tonight. You won't see me in the morning, so don't be alarmed. Continue on with your journey. Okay, but... But? Is there something we can do to help Shireen and Tuval? Skitter tapped his fingers together. I know I only met them today, but... Skitter! Josiah said with a laugh. Why else do you think he called you into this desert? Skitter's face beamed. I have given you the authority to help them, Skitter. Josiah put his hand on Skitter's head. Whatever you need, he'll be able to do it. Thank you, sir. Skitter curled up next to Josiah's side. Josiah stroked Skitter's hair. Skitter, you are a joy to me. Skitter curled his tail around his body and smiled. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for part four. On the Road from Isabel by M. R. Anglin, part four. Finally awake, are you? Tuval stood over Skitter with his hands on his hips. Skitter stretched and ran his hands over his fur. The sky was a soft purple, but turning a shade of rose and mandarin at the horizon. Josiah was nowhere to be seen. When traveling in the desert, you need to leave before it gets too hot, Tuval said, raising a finger in the air. It was nice of your friend to leave us breakfast. We've already eaten, so you can eat on the way. Thanks, Skitter rubbed his eyes. We can't wait for your friend, though. Tuval scratched his hair. I'm not sure how we're going to find him. He said we wouldn't see him this morning. Skitter got to his feet. We can go without him. Tuval studied him for a moment. If you say so. He picked up his sleeping bag. I can't believe I slept in the presence of outsiders. He headed to the sand bike. Where's Shireen? Skitter glanced around the expired campfire. On the bike, Tuval jerked his head towards it. She must have had a bad dream or something. She's acting weird this morning. Not very sociable at all. Skitter's ears went back a bit. He knew what had upset her. He found her sitting on the bike, clutching her sleeping bag like a stuffed animal. I wish she would tell me it was wrong. Tuval strapped the sleeping bag onto the bike. There is a type of language that uses hands to speak. Skitter raised his hands. I know a little bit. I can teach you if you want, Shireen. You see? Tuval thrust his face into Shireen's. I told you, you can learn sign language. It's a perfectly acceptable way of communicating. Shireen shook her head hard. She turned away from them. She's been like this ever since she lost her voice. Tuval kicked a tire. She's so stubborn. She wasn't born without a voice? Skitter's ears pricked. Tuval nodded. She probably doesn't want to learn sign language because it's an outsider invention. Skitter let his ears flatten. Why do you two hate outsiders so much? Because we're Expermian. Skitter stared at him. It's silly, isn't it? Tuval shrugged with a smile. I don't see the logic in it myself. There's so much we can learn from outsiders. But the higher ups decided that a proper Expermian must hate all outsiders, and so we do. That's stupid! Skitter climbed onto the sidecar. It is in this. Tuval's smile faded. But I suppose Shireen and I are not proper experiments anymore. He fell silent for a moment before forcing a smile. And I guess that's fine by me. You're the first outsider I've ever met. But for the life of me, I can't seem to hate you. I don't mind not being hated, Skitter chuckled. But why do you say you're not proper experiments? Tuval and Shireen glanced at each other. Both of their ears fell. 
Because we're running away, Tuval ducked his head. We're running from Isabel. Who's that? I suppose an outsider wouldn't know about him, Tuval bit his bottom lip. He's the experiment god of trainers, knowledge, and wisdom. I've served him all my life. Until now. Shireen clutched her sleeping bag. Skidder crinkled his nose. He had a good idea of where this was going. What changed? I... I didn't want to lose Shireen. Tuval ran his hands along the bike. She's more important to me than following Isafel. Shireen put a hand on Tuval's shoulder. He held on to it. Skidder raised an eyebrow. He wasn't following this at all. Shireen was chosen by Isafel a little while ago. Tuval placed a hand on her cheek. When a fox or vixen is chosen, Isabel takes his or her voice. I tried so hard to find a way to get her voice back before the priest found out, but... He cleared his throat. We had to run away before they took her away. Skidder turned to Shireen. Tears brimmed in her eyes. Just looking at her made a lump grow in Skidder's throat. He knew he wouldn't like the answer to his next question. What happens after a person is chosen? She has to go to his temple to be dedicated to him. Tuval moved his glasses to his forehead. They have to do whatever he says. The Chosen stay in the temple forever. They're not allowed to get married or have children. Their lives belong to Isafel, and their families never see them again. He wiped his eyes. But Shireen and I have been promised to each other since we were kids. She's always been there, and... and... I don't want her to go away. Shireen threw her arms around Tuval and clutched him close to her. She bared her face in his clothes. She doesn't want to go either, Tuval held on to her. That's awful, Skidder bowed his head. So what are you planning to do? Tuval wiped his nose with the back of his hand. My parents live in a town near the mountain. They're planning an expedition to the Cursed Mountain soon. See, there's a city hidden amongst the mountain heights that scholars have been trying to find for ages. In fact, Shireen was visiting me at the university archives and helping me with my research when this happened. You're in university already? At your age? Skidder appraised Tuval. You must be smart. Tuval stifled a smile as he adjusted his glasses. That's what people say about me, anyway. I'm there to learn the basics of document restoration and preservation. Once I learn that, my parents will take over. They can teach me much better than the university can, and... He halted when Shireen tugged his tunic. She gave a little pout and motioned him to continue. Right, Tuval cleared his throat. Anyway, Mama sent me a message saying Papa might have found a clue to the hidden city's location. That's where we're going. Skidder raised an eyebrow. To a cursed mountain? It's not really cursed. At least my research doesn't lead me to think so. Tuval gazed off down the road. But something did happen there in ancient times that made people say it is. Whatever it is has chased all experiments off the mountain tops. That's why we live in the desert to this day. And there's a power that remains on the mountain heights. Some say it's Rafin our chief god, while others say it's something or someone else. Either way, it's such a place that not even the gods would tread there. I'm thinking we might can appeal to that power to save Shireen, or at the very least we can go to a place where Isafel can't get to her. Skidder studied the two foxes from ear to tail. So you're willing to go to a place your people think is cursed, where your gods won't even go, so you can be together? Tuval shrugged. Yeah. And Shireen nodded. That's... that's terribly romantic! Skidder clasped his hands together. Completely unnecessary, but terribly romantic. Unnecessary! Tuval's ears pinned back, and Shireen growled. Didn't you hear what I've been saying? What do you even know about it anyway? Shireen glared at Skidder, crossed her arms, and snorted through her nose. Tuval, Shireen, I haven't known you long, but I can see you're both smart. Skidder shook his tail. So how can you be afraid of a god who's nothing but stone? Both Tuval and Shireen stared at him in disbelief. Think about it. Skidder glanced around until he found a rock. He held it in his hands. If some craftsman carves the image of one of your gods out of this, would you seriously bow down to it? It's a rock! Something happened to Shireen, Tuval motioned to her. Isabel took her voice. She's not making that up. I know something has her voice, but it's not Isabel. Skidder clicked his tongue a few times. It's likely some evil spirit is pretending to be Isabel so that you will do what he wants. Question is, what does it want? Shireen slapped her hand over her mouth. She gaped at Skidder. Wait! Skidder scanned her face. You know, don't you? You know what it wants. Shireen nodded. What is it? Skidder said. Shireen shook her head. Come on, Shireen, you can tell me. Skidder leaned in closer to her. Shireen shook her head. Tears started to pool in her eyes. That's enough. Tuval stood in between them. But... Leave her alone. Tuval's tail bristled. 
What do you know about any of this? We've done nothing but help you, and you respond by insulting our gods and talking to us as if you know it all. What makes you an expert on all this? You don't know what? Skitter started. Had he offended them? He hadn't meant to. He picked up his tail and began to play with it. I'm not an expert, but Cadael is, he said in a softer voice. Tuval forward his brows. Who's Cadael? He's the god I serve. He's the one who sent me here to meet you. Just the mention of Cadael's name made all Skitter's reservations vanish. Only, I didn't know that at the time. Tuval put his hands on his hips. Well, what makes you so sure he's real when you think our gods aren't? You met him last night, Joseph. That was him. Tuval's ears fell back. What? He's the reason Shireen was acting so strange this morning. Skitter scratched his hair. Last night, Cadiel wanted to release her voice, but she got scared. Is that true? Tuval swung around to Shireen. Shireen stiffened. She lowered her eyes and then nodded. Cadiel is... Skitter paused to look at the sky. Oh, I hope it's not bad to say this about him, but he's a jealous god. He doesn't want his servants to worship anyone but him. He grinned at Tuval. And I think he likes you. But he's an outsider god, right? Tuval pushed his glasses up. What would he want with Expermians? But he said you're welcome to him last night, remember? Tuval's ears fell. That's right, he did. He started playing with a piece of cloth hanging on his shoulder. Shrink grabbed Tuval's arms. She shook her head at him and clutched his arm so hard that her nails started to sink into his skin. Ow, Shireen, what's the matter with you? Tuval pried her hands off. Shireen held herself. Her skin underneath her fur paled. Her hands trembled. Tuval studied her a moment. His face softened. Shireen. He took her hands. Your hands are clammy. What's wrong? Why are you so scared? Shireen only shook her head. Skitter's ears pricked. There was a whisper on the wind that he could only just catch. Shireen, are you afraid that Isabel will come after you if you try to appeal to Cadael? A squeak escaped her. She clutched at Tuval. You don't have to worry about that, Skitter patted her arm. Cadael is stronger than anything in the world. You'll see that before this is all over. He narrowed his eyes. Or maybe you already have. Shireen gazed at him, then dropped her eyes. Enough of this. None of this talk is getting us anywhere. Let's go. Tuval mounted the bike. The sun is already up. Skitter nodded. He hopped into the sidecar and settled in as Tuval took off. A fox clad in expermian garb knelt beside the extinguished remains of a campfire. His name was Timane. He wore an orange tunic over his clothes and held a spear with a laser head. His tunic distinguished him as a priest, and the ornament on his spear specified he worked in Isabel's temple. Only a select few had the skills to be one of Isabel's guard priests, strong, brave, chosen by the head priest, and blessed by Isabel with intelligence. But that didn't stop those two brats from escaping his clutches last night. They were here. Tamin glanced around the landscape. How did we miss them? Another guard priest snorted. He must have been all over these dunes during the night. No clue. Tamin examined the camp. There was evidence of four people here. They had help. They'll need help when Icefall runs out of patience, said the second. I'll call this in. Tell them we'll keep track of them, Tamin surveyed the road. It seems they're headed to the mountains. Toward our main temple? The second snickered. I thought this Duval kid was supposed to be smart. He went to his sandbike to call in this information. Tamin narrowed his eyes as he watched the road. There was something strange about this. A power he had never felt before lingered around the camp. It set his teeth on edge. Something was coming down the pipeline. Something was about to happen. And he surely wasn't looking forward to meeting it. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for part five. On the Run from Isofel by M.R. Anglin, part five. The further Skitter and his new friends traveled, the more the landscape changed. Mountains appeared in the distance and loomed larger as they went. It took some days before a town emerged on the horizon, a dark cardboard-like cutout against the skyline that had become laced with towering mountains. But it wasn't until the next morning that they drove into the town, nestled in the foothills of the Expermar Mountains. Here we are, Duval shouted over the roar of the bike. This is Parent Mount, the premier location for all researchers and seekers of knowledge. It's my hometown. Skitter gazed around as they went. The buildings and roads were covered in dust and sand all except one, a white and brown edifice that gleamed in the sun. 
It had spires that towered over the rest of the buildings, and was decorated with murals of a red fox holding a book, as well as foxes with silver fur surrounding him. Foxes and vixens in white, with yellow and brown tunics over their experiment clothes, milled to and fro in front of it. Many of them had books in their hands. A work crew standing on scaffolding busied themselves cleaning the dust and grime off the building's murals. What's that? Skidder pointed to the building. It's Isabel's main temple. Tuval rushed past it. All true seekers of wisdom and knowledge come here at least once in their lives to seek Isafel's guidance and to be blessed with wisdom. I practically grew up there. Skidder looked over his shoulder at the temple. If you're running from Isafel, why did you come to the location of his main temple? It's the only place we can go. Tuval sped down the road. We can't get the proper supplies for going into the mountains to find the hidden city anywhere else. Plus, this is where my parents live. It's a calculated risk. If we keep a low profile, we'll be out of here before anyone notices. Skinner took one last look at the temple before it disappeared among the buildings. A fox dressed in fancier clothes than the others emerged from the temple as Tuval turned a corner. He wore a red tunic and had a squarish beretta that looked curiously like a book on his head. As soon as he emerged, he looked in Skidder's direction. Even from a distance, even though he had only glimpsed him for a moment, Skidder knew that Priest had spotted him. The sight of him made Skidder's tail twitch. It was as if an unspoken war had been declared between the two of them. He turned in the sidecar and snorted through his nose as if getting rid of an unpleasant smell. Shireen caught his attention out of the corner of his eyes. She was watching him, but when he turned to her she averted her eyes and clutched onto Tuval. Skidder smiled. He could see the wheels in her mind turning, considering whether or not to risk it all in an appeal to Cadiel. He leaned back in his chair. Between Shireen's indecision and the priest's appearance, Skidder was certain that something was going to happen soon. They wouldn't make it long without being discovered. Skidder crossed his arms. Whatever was going to happen was coming soon, and he had to be ready for it. The sandbike disappeared around a corner, its passengers obscured by the buildings surrounding the temple. They weren't in view for very long, merely a few seconds, but it was long enough. Hiram narrowed his eyes. That's him, came a voice in Hiram's ear. That's the enemy. Hiram adjusted his beretta. As a head priest of Isafel, he had heard Isafel's voice in the past, but that didn't mean it didn't unnerve him every time he did hear it, particularly lately. Isafel's voice was harsher than usual, angry. It made Hiram's insides tremble. Lord Isafel. Hiram focused to keep his voice from cracking when he spoke. That's a child. How could he be an enemy of yours? He's an outsider, Isabel snarled, nearly making Hiram scream. He has defied me and has kept a chosen from me, all in the name of a foreign god. He paused a moment. You're lucky I don't destroy all of you for failing to capture them before now. Hiram turned to his left. The guard priests he had dispatched from the capital at Isabel's behest approached him. Lord Hiram, sir, Tamane dropped to his knee. You have failed me, Tamane. Hiram clutched his staff. Because of this guard priest's failure, Icefell's wrath hovered over all their heads. Forgive me, my lord. Tamane bowed with his forehead to Hiram's toes. I don't understand it. Although we had them in sight, we could not catch up to them during the day. And at night, they disappeared. We could find no trace of them until the morning. Is that so? Hiram forwarded his brows. That was odd. The guard priests were masters of the desert. Tamane especially. He could track a flea in a sand pile. Unless... Unless there was another power at work. It's the outsider! Icefell's voice hissed in Hiram's ear. Hiram slammed the butt of his staff to the ground. Let us depart. We shall descend on them now, take the Chosen, and eliminate the threat. Icefell has spoken. Sir! Tamane bowed his head to the ground. He got to his feet and took off to prepare his men. Hiram faced the direction in which Tuval had ridden off. There was something about that outsider that didn't sit right with him. He clenched his teeth together. There was much more to this whole thing than he could see, and what he did see was unnerving. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for Part 6. On the Run from Isafel by M. R. Anglin Part 6 Tuval pulled up to a small storefront, though Skidder couldn't tell what the proprietors were selling. Piles of books, papers, pictures, and statues were bundled into the windows, not leaving any space for curious patrons to look inside. A sign overhead read, Restorations. Messier than I remember it, Tuval dismounted his bike. 
Where are we? Skinner hopped out of the sidecar. This is my parents' place. Duval helped Shireen off the bike. We have to stay for about a week. If we keep out of sight, we'll make it. That is, if my parents actually leave when they say they will. He opened the door and walked in. A bell rang as they entered. Skitter gazed around. It used to be a store, but now it was a place that housed books and parchments, pictures and ancient carvings. Everything looked old and full of history, so Skitter couldn't understand why it was all tossed about willy-nilly. Didn't these people care about all these old, delicate items? But all Skitter could see of anyone were the tips of two large ears dancing above the counter. What in cloth? Duval took his glasses off to clean them. Mamai? A vixen popped her head from behind the counter. She had brick-colored fur, black ears not quite so large as Duval's, and brown hair that faded to a shade of yellow-green at the ends. She wore a yellow dress similar to Charain's. I, I thought I heard the door, but... Duval, what are you doing here? The expedition? You told me to come. Duval rolled his eyes. This is my mother, Tillin. Don't mind her. She's a little scatterbrained at times. Actually, both my parents are. I am not scatterbrained, Tillin tapped her forehead, but I know I had it here. I'm usually so organized when it comes to my restorations. She ducked behind the counter. After a moment, she popped her head back up. Wait a minute, who's that? She pointed to Skitter. His name is Skitter, Duval motioned to him. I met him on the way over here, and we've been traveling together. Pleased to meet you, Tillin Lee, Skitter gave a little bow. You picked up an outsider? Tillin crossed her arms as she watched Skitter. Do you mind? Duval said. Tillin studied Skitter for a moment before shrugging. I'm supposed to, but meh, my mind is too full with other things. She went back to searching behind the counter. By the way, Tootfall, I know I asked you to come to the expedition, but I wasn't expecting you until the weekend. Don't you have exams? She peeked up from behind the counter for a moment before ducking back down. Although, this does explain why we haven't been able to reach you. You tried to reach me? Tootfall leaned over the counter. We've had to cancel the expedition, Tootfall. Tillin stood up, scratching her hair. We've had a break-in. The scroll I was restoring and the ones your father was translating have gone missing. He's off searching the bazaar, hoping that someone sold it for quick cash. But we have to go on that expedition, Mamai. Duval slammed his hands on the counter. We have to. Shireen. 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 Tillin tapped her chin. There is something about her I had to tell you. She suddenly gasped. Oh, that's right. That's the other reason we tried to contact you. Sweetheart, something terrible has happened to Shireen. I know, Tuval lowered his ears. You do? Tillin said. Of course, Tuval motioned to Shireen. Shireen? Tillin placed her hands on her cheeks. You're here. She darted around the counter and threw her arms around Shireen. I'm so glad you're all right. Your parents are worried about you. Shireen squeezed her. What's the matter, dear? Tillin searched her face. Why won't you speak? Tillin raised her eyebrows. Tuval exchanged a glance with Skitter. Don't you know, Mama? Tuval cleared his throat. Isabel took her voice. She's a chosen? Tillin's ear shut up. She gazed at Shireen. Her parents didn't tell me that. Tuval forward his brow. But didn't you say that something terrible had happened to her? I was referring to the fact that she had disappeared. Tillin put a hand on her hips. Becoming a chosen isn't a terrible thing, Tuval. Tuval fell quiet. He crossed his arms before saying, It is if I'm losing her. Oh. Tillin's ears fell back. Oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. She caressed Shireen's ears. You poor thing. That's why we have to go on this expedition, Mamai. Tuval clenched his fist. We have to. Tillin studied her son for a few moments. She looked at Shireen and then at the mountains in the distance. Oh, I see. That's why you ran. You want to get to the hidden city and appeal to... Hmm. But Tuval, my love, that's dangerous. Even if the stories are true and there's another power up there, if Isova caught you before you made it... I don't care! Tuval slammed his fist on the counter. I don't care. Shireen slipped her arms around him. Silence flooded the room. It was Skitter who broke it. May I ask a question? Tillin swung around. Who? Oh, you. I'd forgotten you were there. Go ahead. Skitter peeked behind the counter where Tillin had been searching. What were you looking for when we came in? A parchment I was restoring. Tillin ran her eyes over the place. I was sure I had it in here. My husband believes that parchment holds a clue to the location of the hidden city. But you said there was a brick in. Skitter cocked his head. Wasn't it stolen? Here's the thing about that. I'm not sure you can call it a brick in. It was more of a... Hmm. Well, 
actually, I'm not sure what you would call it. Skidder waited for her to continue, but when she fell silent, staring at the floor in thought, he said, What happened? Hm? Tillin picked her head up. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I was in the basement where I do all my restorations. Everything down there is kept at the perfect conditions to ensure the most minimal impact to the ancient documents. So I know I wouldn't have had that parchment out unless I was down there. My husband was upstairs attempting to translate some other pieces of related parchment I had restored. All of a sudden, the ground shook. I heard my husband scream, so I rushed upstairs to see what was the matter. Before I got to the stairs, a wind blew through the basement, crashing everything to the ground and throwing me into the wall. I think I blacked out. When I came to myself, the parchment was missing, and both the basement and the storefront was a terrible mess. Wasn't the Liz, Tuval muttered. Skitter stifled a snicker and let Tillin continue. My husband told me that after the shaking, the lights went out and he felt someone snatch the parchment right out of his hands. Tillin tapped her hands together. The whole thing is baffling. No one who respects knowledge would dare steal such valuable scrolls. I can't fathom it. Shrain gasped. She slapped Tuval's arms. She pointed at Tillin and then at herself. What? Tuval watched her a moment. What's she doing? Tillin's ears angled to the side. She looks upset about something. Shireen kept gesturing. Her movements became bigger and more exaggerated. I think she's trying to say something to us. Skitter studied her. But I can't tell what she wants to say. Stop, Shireen. Calm down. Tuval caught her shoulders. We don't understand. Shireen took a deep breath. She took a step back and then pointed to herself. You, Tuval, motioned to her. Are you trying to tell us something about you? Shireen nodded. She paced around the room, looking at the different scrolls and books. You were looking for something, Tillin said. Shireen pointed at her nose and nodded. Then she picked up a book and pointed at it. And you found it, Tuval said. Shireen pointed at her nose. Then she waved her hands around furiously. And now you've lost me. Tuval ran his hands through his hair. Shireen snorted through her nose. She pointed at Tillin and then at herself. Hmm, Skidder studied Shireen and Tillin. Are you saying that what happened to Tillin Lee happened to you? Shireen beamed. She pointed at her nose and nodded. You found the document, and then the light went out. The wind blew, and when you woke up, the document was gone, Skitter said. Shireen pointed at her nose. So that's what this is about, Skitter slammed a fist in his palm. There's something in that document that Isabel, or whoever, doesn't want anyone to know about, so he took your voice that you couldn't tell. Shireen clapped and nodded. And that's why you don't want to learn sign language, because if you found another way to communicate, he'd take that too, Skitter said. Shireen took his hands and jumped up and down with him. Tuval raised an eyebrow at Skitter. How did you get all that? That is ridiculous, Tillin crossed her arms. To stop the spread of knowledge goes against every tenet Isabel teaches us. Technically, I don't think it's Isabel at all, but... Skitter shrugged. There's an easy way to figure this out, Tuval faced his mother. Mamai, what did the parchment say? I don't know. I just started restoring it. There wasn't even enough for your father to start translating. The only thing I could understand was a certain drawing. It was... odd. What was it? Tuval said. I think it may have been a reference to what caused the Great Migration. Tillin knit her brows. As far as I can tell, there was a figure in the picture that all the aged Expermians were running away from. But the figure wasn't any of the Expermian gods. Skidder's tail twitched. He didn't know why, but he felt that figure was the key to everything. What did it look like? It was male, and fuzzy, and white, maybe? Tillin tapped the counter with a finger. It was definitely an outsider. What species? Tuval said. I'm not so familiar with outside species, so I'm not quite sure. Tillin closed her eyes for a moment. Maybe a wolf, or a dog, or a jackal. Definitely a canine of some sort. Shrink clutched Tuval's hands. She pointed to Skitter and then motioned to the air around him. You know what it is, don't you? Tuval grunted. If only you had your voice. Your voice! Skitter faced Shireen. You see it now, don't you? Shireen averted her eyes from Skitter. There's no more running, Shireen. Skitter took her hands. You have to let Cadiel help you, because none of this will get resolved unless you let him restore your voice. Shireen ducked her head. She squeezed her eyes shut and took a trembling breath. When she opened her eyes, she looked at Skitter and nodded. Are, are you sure about this, Shireen? Tuval searched her face. Shireen smiled and nodded. Oh, wait! Tillin cocked her head. Who's Cadiel? Tuval waved her off. I'll explain it later, Mamai. Ready? Skitter said. Shireen opened her mouth as wide as she could. Skitter peered in. At first he didn't see anything of alarm, but then, as if someone had snapped his eyes into focus, he saw it. A 
black slimy mass spiderwebbed across her tongue. Skitter pinched the stuff between two fingers. He pulled. It stretched, but stuck onto Shireen's tongue. He got a better grip and yanked. The stuff stretched longer and longer until it snapped off. Skitter fell back on his tail. The black stuff dissipated into smoke and disappeared. Ow! Shireen fell back on the floor. That hurt! She rubbed the base of her tail. Shireen! Tuval's ear stood straight up. You're talking! It worked! Shireen gasped. I am! She jumped to her feet. I'm talking, Skitter! She took his hands. I know what this is all about. You won't believe it. Or maybe you will. Stop rambling and tell us, Tuval said. Okay, okay, okay. Shireen took a deep breath. It was... The door burst open. A group of foxes barged in, filling the entrance and blocking off the exit. It was the priests of Isophel. They had been found. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for part 7. On the Run from Isophel by M. R. Anglin, part 7. Shrein yelped and ducked behind two walls as ten priests barreled in. One of them, the one wearing a red tunic over his clothes, stood before the others. Skidder recognized him as the high priest, the same one he had seen before. He had red fur, eyes as blue as midnight, and his red hair peeking out from under his hat faded into a shade of yellow-orange at the ends. It has come to my attention that a chosen of Isabel has taken refuge here. The head priest scanned the store. His eyes fell on Shireen. There you are! Honestly, you didn't have to come all this way to Isabel's main temple to dedicate yourself. The one in Silver State would have done nicely. Don't touch her! Tuval backed away with Shireen behind him. Tuval, the head priest turned his eyes toward him. I cannot tell you how disappointed I am to see you here. From the moment of your birth, I knew you were special. I watched you grow with pride as if you were my own son. Icevel has lavished you with a double portion of his blessings. How could you betray him in such a manner? He locked eyes with Tuval. Tuval's eyes opened wide, and they glazed over. I, I don't know. He hung his head and shook all over. I, I'm sorry. Forgive me, Lord Hiron. There now, child. It's all right. Hiron held out his hand to Tuval. Submit yourself to Icefell. He'll restore you. Tuval remained silent a moment. Then he reached out a trembling hand to the head priest. Tuval? Shireen snatched Tuval's hand. Tuval, what's wrong with you? She tried to pull his hand down. I I've never seen him like this, Tillin said under her breath, but she didn't move from where she stood. Skidder felt his fur prickle. Something wasn't right here. Just two seconds with this fox had drained all the fight out of Tuval. And as for you, Hiram turned his eyes to Shireen. She stiffened. You can speak, but I know you are chosen. Come with me. You'll have a good life in the temple. Shireen stood stiff. Her entire body trembled. N no, I, I don't want to. You will come now. Hiram narrowed his eyes at Shireen. She trembled all over, her voice cracking. Skitter shivered from head to tail. A power had trickled into this room. It round itself around to Wall and Shireen and set Skitter's teeth on edge. It permeated the room, making it feel like Skitter was choking on something. That's enough! Skitter stomped his foot on the ground. Immediately, the oppressive atmosphere had vanished. Shireen fell to her knees. No, I don't want to go! Tuval lurched away from the priest. He collapsed on the floor, panting and trembling. He, he made me say things. I couldn't say what I wanted to. Hiram swung around to face Skitter. His teeth were bare to the gums. You! Skitter regarded the fox without a word. I know about you. Hiram bared his teeth at Skitter. Isafel also warned me about an outsider who seeks to turn out his followers away. He will not stand for that. You are marked now. You will learn the true power of our gods. The other priests shook their spears and shouted. I already know the power of your gods. Skitter approached the head priest. He had to look up to see his face. So, for your own sakes, I'm going to ask you this nicely. Please leave Shireen and Tuval alone. Begging will avail you nothing. The head priest raised his hands and chanted. The other priest joined in. The sun seemed to darken. Over the priest's head came a dark mass that converged into the figure of a fox. It rose over their heads until it touched the ceilings. I fell. Tillin dropped to her knees with her face to the ground. Oh no! Duval trembled where he had fallen on the ground. The, the gods have come upon me! Shireen whimpered behind Tuval. She bared her face in his fur and started to mutter something. Wow! Skitter gazed up at the dark mass towering above him. That is kind of impressive. 
I can see why experiments are so afraid of you. Silence, outsider! Icefell's voice grated against Skidder's ears. Even the priest cowered in front of him. You will wish you'd never defied me! He rose his fist and brought it down on Skidder's head. Skidder watched him, but didn't move. The fist slammed into... something. Skidder felt the shock wave from the strike, but his fist didn't touch him. Isofel pounded and pounded, but to no avail. Isofel snarled at Skidder. He thrust his face into Skidder's and roared. It was all Skidder could do to keep from backing up or flinching, not because he was scared, but because the wind that came from Isofel reeked of all sorts of rotten things. But the fact that Skidder remained motionless infuriated Isofel. Get him! Kill him now! The priests brandished their spears. Skidder heard a high-pitched whine as they charged. Lord Isofel? Tillin raised her head from where she lay. Who dares intrude on my judgment? Icefell growled. P please hear me! Tillin pulled herself to her knees. I, I and my family have been ever so faithful to you. We followed your words to the letter. Please, this sort of violence is not like you. In the ancient texts, you've always pursued knowledge, spreading battle and war the other gods. Enough! Icefell swept his arm toward her. A searing wind blasted over Skidder's head. It slammed Tillin into a shelf of books. She collapsed on the floor. The books cascaded over her, and the bookshelf teetered and toppled. Tillin Lee! Skidder caught the bookshelf before it slammed into her. Mamai! Duval darted to her, but Isofel held out his hand. Duval slammed into an invisible wall. No! Duval slammed his fist against the barrier. What do you think you're doing, Duval? Isofel sneered, showing a row of sharpened teeth. Did you think you could escape after betraying me? I, I don't care! Duval backed away, holding out his hand to protect Shireen. I won't let you take her. And how will you stop me? Icefell smirked. Skidder glanced at Duval. He wanted to help, but he had to get to Tillin to make sure she wasn't hurt. He shoved the bookshelf away from her and dove under the books to see if she was all right. Tuval clenched his teeth together. I, I'll i appeal to another power. He trembled all over. I'll appeal to Kato. Silence! Icefell curled his fingers as if grasping something. Don't you dare say a foreign god's name in my presence. Tuval clutched at his throat. He made a choking sound as he rose into the air. No, Tuval! Shireen clutched at him. Oh, please, oh, please, come save us, come now! She clasped her hands together. There is none to save you! Icefell tightened his grip. Tuval squirmed in the air. Skidder threw a book off a till in space. She was breathing, but her eyes were closed and there was blood on her forehead. She groaned. Tuval, please, my son! Skidder tapped his teeth together. Fur rose all over his body. His tail shivered and bristled, and he trembled all over. He faced the thing hovering above him. I have had enough out of you, Skidder looked Isofel square in the eyes. Release Tuval now! Isofel laughed at him. And why would I do that? Skidder stood to his full height. Because I am a servant of Karel, he narrowed his eyes, and I command it. He stomped his foot. The earth trembled beneath his feet. Isofel lurched back as if struck, and all the priests fell backwards on their tails. Tuval dropped to the ground. Icefell righted himself. He snarled at Skidder. Why, you little... He reached his hand towards Skidder, and then froze. His eyes widened, then darkened. His teeth bared to the gums. The room dimmed in response. Skidder shivered as a cold tendril ran over his body. He had never seen or felt such unadulterated hatred in his entire life. The priests, too, halted where they lay after being thrown back. The ears fell backwards. All of them watched something behind Skidder's back. Shireen let out a cry of delight. A breeze, cool, refreshing, and smelling like the rain, wafted past Skidder. Light, soft and fresh, shone on his shoulders. His trembling calmed, and his fur settled, and his teeth stopped tapping. Skidder turned. Josiah stood there, staring at the spirit with a steely gaze. He approached, patting Skidder's shoulder as he passed. Spirit styling yourself as Isabel, Joseph held out his hand. Return what you have stolen. Isabel grunted. He clenched his teeth and tensed his arm, trying to hold it back, but slowly his arm extended towards Joseph. In it was a leather packet. He held his fist over Joseph's outstretched arm, and one by one his fingers opened. The packet fell into Joseph's hands. Joseph lowered his hand and then narrowed his eyes at the spirit. He snorted through his nose and turned his back on it. Continue, Skidder. Joseph put a hand on Skidder's shoulder. Yes, sir, Skidder faced the spirit. In the name of Cadillac, whom I serve, vacate this premises immediately. 
blast of cold air slammed into the spirit. A sharp, piercing cry shattered the air. The spirit flew out of the building and disappeared. As for you, Joseph turned to the priest. You have raised your hands against my two servants, whom I have chosen. His voice lowered almost to a growl. Leave now, or your lives are forfeit. The priest gaped at Josiah for a moment before scrambling out of the store. Josiah watched him leave. He took a deep breath and released it in a sigh. Soon, very soon, I will make things right and expire me again. He smiled at Skitter before turning. Well done, Shireen, he grinned at her. It's lovely to hear your voice again. Thank you. Shireen giggled as if someone was tickling her. Josiah stood in front of Tuval. Come, Tuval, stand to your feet. You are exceedingly brave with someone so young. Tuval stood before Joseph and adjusted his glasses. So many questions in your eyes. Joseph put his hand on Tuval's shoulders. Continue to seek the truth and I will answer them all. But in the meantime, I have a question for you. Will you leave behind your fears and follow me? Tuval gulped. Joseph patted his shoulders before continuing to Tillin, still lying amongst the books. He bent over and held out his hand to her. Tillin groaned. Her eyes opened, but once they fell on Joseph, her groaning stopped. She watched him for a moment before taking his hand. He hoisted her to her feet. How do you feel, my dear? Joseph patted her hand. I... I feel good. Tillin touched her forehead. I... I'm not sure what happened. I... I'm a bit confused. I... I believe this belongs to you. Joseph handed her the packet he had taken from Isafel. Tillin took it from his hands. Both you and your husband are welcome to me. Josiah pressed her hands between his. Will you tell him that? Tillin nodded. Josiah smiled. The sky cleared. The sun blazed forth, but the soft, cool light was gone. Josiah was no longer there, but judging by everyone's wide eyes and open mouths, nothing was the same. Hiram ran all the way back to the temple, burst into his chambers, and slammed the door behind him. He slid to the ground and cowered behind the door. He had never seen anything like that. The power, the glory, it set every strand of fur on his body on edge. What was that? Hiram swung around with a curse. He didn't realize Timain had come with him. Lord Hiram, what was that? Timain looked at him through wide eyes. That, that outsider god, he was more powerful than I, so shh! Hiram slapped his hand over Timain's mouth. Don't say it. Do you want to be marked by the gods? What, what was that? Tamin shook from head to toe. Be quiet! Hiram looked around. Go tell the rest of the guard priests to keep their mouths shut. We will not breathe a word of what happened to anyone, and we'll have to make sure Tuval doesn't talk either. But that god was defending them. He... Tamin dropped his voice. He defeated Isabel. How can we fight against that? He's an outsider god. What does he have to do with Expermians? Hiram adjusted his barretta. I suspect that once the outsider leaves, his god would leave as well. And besides, it was one outsider god against Isafel, the... He lowered his voice. The weakest of all our gods. I doubt this new god could stand against Rafim and all the rest. I will speak to the high priest in charge of Rafim's temple and have him inquire of Rafim. I'm sure together we can handle the threat. Somehow I doubt that, Timin muttered. I once swung around. What was that? Nothing. Timin stood up straight. I'll talk to the men now before the story gets out. Hiram watched him stride to the door, but inside his stomach dropped. Tamid had voiced the doubt he had no courage to say aloud. But doubt or not, there was nothing he could do about this situation. His only options were to fight alongside the gods he had grown up with, or to align himself with an outsider's god. And there was no way he was about to submit himself to the same god an outsider would worship. He'd rather die than do that. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for part eight. On the run from Isabel, part eight. He came. Shireen clapped her hands together. Josiah really came. I called to him and he came. Skidder turned to Shireen. So he was talking about you when he said my two servants. I decided I would trust him when we got into town. I saw the priest watching us and I realized we couldn't run anymore. I had seen Josiah when he sent his servants to defend you at the shop where we first met. I tried to tell Tuval, but I guess he didn't understand. He thought I wanted him to help you. Shireen clasped her hand. From that moment, I decided I wanted to follow Josiah, but I was afraid of what Isabel would do, and I didn't think Josiah would accept me. Wait, what? 
what just happened? Tillin dropped to her knees. The packet she had been given fell from her hands. Isofel, you tried to kill Tuval, and, and, that, that outsider, he, he, Mamai, Tuval rushed to her. Mamai, I thought I lost you. Tillin blinked. She stared at the top of Tuval's ears a moment before throwing her arms around him. Tuval, I've never been so scared in my life. I've never seen anything like that before, and I, I don't know what's going on anymore. I do, Shireen bounced in her toes. It was just Scythe. That's what Isofel didn't want me to tell anybody. I was helping Tuval in the archives when I found a journal of a scholar who had seen a mural when he was searching for the hidden city. I'm sure it's the same one depicted on the parchment. Joseph was a figure the ancient experiments were running from. Joseph? Tuval cocked his head. But how could these ancient documents talk about him when he was right there? You can see for yourselves. Terrain pointed to the packet Tillin had dropped. Isn't that what Joseph returned? I think those are the parchments that Isofel stole. Tillin turned her eyes to the packet on the ground. She and Tuval exchanged a glance. He nodded at her. He picked up the packet and undid the string. Oh, she cried out. Shireen's right. These are the missing parchments. And here's the one I was working on. She spread it on the floor. Mamai, what are you doing? Tuval hissed a breath in through his teeth. These are delicate. You can't leave them on the floor. But Tillin was listening. Tuval, look! Tuval leaned over the parchment. Skid appeared over Tuval's shoulder. The parchment was yellowed and had holes in it, and the text was illegible. But Tillin had started to restore the drawing at the top of it. It was faded, but Skidder could make out a white figure standing with his arms stretched out. Lightning erupted from his hands, striking the area around him. Masses of experiments, though not all of them foxes, fled before him. Tuval sat up straight. So, Joseph was the reason the ancient experiments fled the mountain? I... I don't know. Skidder peered at the parchment. This is the first time I've seen or heard anything like this. Tillin ran her hands across the image of Joseph. According to your father's and my research, Tuval, the ancient experiments staged a great rebellion against someone. We've never had a concise answer as to who they rebelled from before. But if our interpretation of this parchment is correct, it may well have been Joseph. This mural depicts what happens in response to that rebellion. Does that mean that Joseph was there before the experiments gods were? Tuval said. That the ancient experiments used to worship him first? If that's the case, these parchments could rock all of Experimia to its foundations. Tillin fell silent for a moment. No wonder they tried to express this information. Shireen studied the floor for a moment. Do you know what question has been bothering me since my voice was stolen? Why did Isabel change so suddenly? What do you mean there? Tillin kept her eyes on what she was doing. You said it yourself when Skidder was facing Isafel. Shireen played with her hair. He's changed. He used to be gentle and a pursuer of knowledge, but now he tried to kill Tuval and steal your parchments. Why? That wasn't Isafel. Skidder turned to Shireen. Tuval turned to him, mouth agape. How can you say that? You saw it, Skidder. Didn't I tell you before? Skidder gazed at the ceiling a moment. I think an evil spirit is pretending to be Isafel to get you to do what it wants. Even Josiah said so. Then what happened to the real Isafel? Shireen said. I don't think there ever was a real Isafel. Skidder crossed his arms. I think that spirit, or maybe different ones, made up those stories and images of your gods and convinced your people they were true. That way, they could get your people to do what they wanted, including rebelling against Gadiel. Either way, it's a moot point, don't you think? Tillin gazed at the packet in her hands. Whether it's Isabel or not, we've had an encounter with someone today, someone powerful. You're right, Mamai. Tuval fell silent a moment before his ear shot into the air. We have to find Papai and leave immediately. He hopped to his feet. Leave? Why? Tillin started to carefully return the parchment back to the packet. Are you kidding me? Tuval clutched his hair. Didn't you see what they did to try and stop Shireen from talking? Did you not witness what I did? This isn't the end. They're going to come back, and who knows what they'll do now that we've defied them. Oh, well, you're right. Tillin gathered the packet. But if we're leaving, I can't leave my tools behind. And your father, he'll need it. Books and notes, too. She scrambled to her feet. Oh, my. Tuval watched as she started scrambling around the room, gathering this and that. What are you doing? I have to pack. I need to prepare. Tillin scrambled down the stairs. I can't leave my documents. 
Tuva pulled on his hair. Mamai, we have to go now. He started after her. Tuva, relax. Skitter pulled him to a halt. You don't have to be so afraid. Yeah, Shireen took his hand. Just like Ruby with us. And Skitter. That's right. And Skitter's ears pricked. He caught a whisper in the air. Oh, well, actually I won't be. What? Shireen swung around to face him. Why? I've done the job Cadiel wanted me to do, apparently. Skitter turned to the east. He wants me to go that way until I hit the ocean. But, but... Tuval's ears fell. Oh, Skitter. Shireen lowered her head. I'm sorry. Skitter's tail flopped. I'd like to stay with you, but I have to go where Cadiel taught me. Well, Tuval lifted his ears. At least let us pack you up with supplies before you go. We'll have to get some, too, if we're going to be on the run. Skitter cocked his ear. Cadiel gave his approval. Thank you. I'd like that. We have to leave now. Tuval headed to the door. Mamai, come on. I'm ready. Tilin appeared with a pack on her shoulder and another in her hand. Everything we need to restore and translate on the road is in here. Here, Tuval. She handed him the pack in her hand. That's all your most precious possessions. Your microscope, your favorite books, your maps. Mamai. Tuval took the backpack. That's, that's thoughtful of you. Of course. Tillin shouldered her pack. I know you'd be devastated if you left things behind you needed or wanted. We won't be coming back for a while at least. We have to be ready for everything. I'm impressed. Tuval smiled at her. I didn't know you felt that way. Tillin raised her chin. I told you I wasn't scatterbrained. Skitter snickered. Tuval exchanged a glance with him and smiled. Are you sure you can't come with us, Skitter? Shireen held her hands in front of her. They were at the bazaar, a place where Expermian merchants sat under covered tarps to sell things to other Expermians. Skitter saw everything for sale, from pots to vases to fruit to guns to mountain climbing gear. Helen had gone to find her husband while Tuval, Skitter, and Shireen stocked up with supplies. Tuval had even gotten Skitter a hat with a cloth hanging on the back to keep the sun off his neck. I wish I could stay, Shireen, but Cadiel told me I have somewhere to go. Skitter stretched. I have to glide across the ocean to get there. Glide across the ocean? Will you be okay? Tuval studied Skitter's frame. You don't look too sturdy. I've trained my whole life for far flight. Skitter shook his arm flaps. I can't wait to get to land, though. Gliding over the ocean is tough. I hope we meet again, Skitter. Shireen took his hand. Me too. Skitter looked at Shireen, then Tuval. His stomach sank at the thought of leaving them. Where are you going to go? There's a ruin in the foothills that researchers use as a base camp when they set out on an expedition to the mountains. Tuval turned to the mountain range in the distance. No one ever stays there long because it's so close to the crest of the mountain. I doubt Isabella the priest will come after us. We'll stay for a while until we figure out what to do. My guess is that we'll keep searching for the hidden city. Nothing else for us to do. I hope you find it. Skitter gazed at the mountains. I'd like to see this crescent mountain and the hidden city you've been talking about. Maybe you'll be able to join the expedition once we find out where it is. Tuval put his hands on his hips. Now that we have the parchment back, we can start looking. I hope I can, Skitter said. Thank you so much for all you did, Skitter. Shireen threw her arms around him. Stay safe. I will. Skitter patted her back before pulling away. Say goodbye to Till and Lee for me, Tuval. He extended his hand. I will. Tuval shook it. If you ever come back to Expermia, try and find us. Skitter nodded. He shouldered the pack they had bought for him and set off down the road. He sighed as he went. He's going to miss them. Well done, Skitter. Josiah appeared beside him. Thank you, sir, Skitter said. Where are we going next? You have quite a trek ahead, but your next assignment will be a nice tropical place. Josiah smiled at him. You'll like it there. Just make sure you don't rush your trip across the ocean. Yes, sir, Skitter said. I won't. That is the end of On the Run to Isafel. Thank you for listening.